Hi, this is Regina Thomas, and today I'd like to talk about Giacomo Puccini and the opera that almost cost him his career. Before we talk about this opera specifically, in general, I'd like to talk about what it is that makes the greatest operas really great. Now, this is a bit of a subjective um, viewpoint because different people have different operas that they think are really the greatest ones. But in general, you have to have a wonderful story with great drama, well-written words and, uh, and characters combined with brilliantly written music that suits that drama. So without those two things together in great partnership, you can't really have the best of opera. And usually an opera that doesn't have all that doesn't have much staying power. So Giacomo Puccini was incredibly successful and many of his operas are done frequently today. The one we're going to talk about today, not so much. Puccini had had incredible success with his very first opera, Le Vili, and Ricordi, the publisher of that opera, had commissioned him to write a second opera, and they selected the same librettist who had written Le Vili for him to partner with him. This opera became Edgar. Well, Edgar really was a very flawed libretto, and Puccini was young, so it really was not the highest quality of his work. It had some nice things and to recommend it, but it was definitely not a great work. It received very lukewarm response, and Puccini, in spite of having him rewrite it several times, it just never caught on for various reasons, which I'll go into in a little more detail in a minute. So, uh, you know, if it had just been about the opera itself, though, Ricordi would have probably been fine just keeping him on his allowance and retainer and, and encouraging him to continue to build his skills. However, at the same time, Puccini ran off with one of his former piano students who was a married woman. So, in light of this scandalous behavior, all of Ricordi's uh, associates were encouraging him to drop Puccini from his roster. However, Giulio Ricordi really had great faith in Puccini and he kept Puccini on. And lo and behold, Puccini did come back with great operas, many, many great operas. So let's talk a little bit about Edgar. We've produced a little snippet of the opera, which, you know, in a way, this little snippet of the opera, the video that we've made, kind of shows off both what's strong about the opera, and beautiful and admirable, but also its greatest weakness. Um, the opera, you know, to be blunt, is just so, has so many stereotypes about women and personalities are all two-dimensional, and it's just, you know, not a great story to begin with. So it is starting out to be very black and white. This guy, uh, he, Edgar, title character, he had been ran off to sow his wild oats, and he was having this life of debauchery with this wild woman, Tigrana. <laughs> and let's look at that, the name, Tigrana. Um, and so she's a mezzo-soprano, um, which is kind of a stereotypical mezzo-soprano role. She's a wild woman. She was abandoned by wandering moors, and then she had been adopted by the father of the other woman. Her name was Fidelia. Fidelity, right? So are we, we're starting to get the picture here. One is this epitome of purity and, you know, goodness. And the other one is this debauchery, debauchery wild woman. And so Edgar had run off with Tigrana, but he comes back. He's like, oh, I'm going to be good now. And so I love Fidelia. So that's really the crux of the story, Edgar trying to come back and be good. But the two women are really very, very stereotyped, static characters, as is his, as are all the characters in this story. Um, and so the, the video that we have is the opening aria of 
Fidelia. And it is so, uh, you know, one could imagine a Disney princess singing this or Disney to be producing videos at that time. La 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 la, it's spring and the flowers and it's so beautiful. And this is the aria. Um, she's just enjoying spring and flowers. And so everything about her character is supposed to be good and wholesome. And he's, he's trying to come back to being good and wholesome. In the end, though, uh, Tigrana stabs Fidelio because she can't have Edgar. So it has that little violence in it. But it really doesn't hold together well as a story. So we've got this beautiful O Fior del Giorno, flower of the day. But what is so wonderful about this, even though it is early Puccini, and it isn't his full developed skills yet, he's already doing, showing trademark skills, which is this beautiful painting of a character through the colors of the music that they sing. So you really get the feel of that in O Fior del Giorno. This beautiful high lyrical soprano is the goodness and this mezzo that's very earthy sounding is that, you know, that wild woman. 